So, if you were to give it a short definition, mindfulness is bringing attention to the present moment on purpose and without judgment. So that's a, a strange definition. Bringing attention to the present moment on purpose without judgment. So why might that be important in a coaching context? I think one of the most important things for a coach is to actually really be attentive to what the client or coachee is actually saying to the coach. So for, for the purposes of the coach, it's a very important skill to be aware, to be attentive, not to have judgment, to fully embrace whatever the coachee is bringing along. If we then use mindfulness as a teaching tool, as a life skill that we might teach to the coachee, it again will help the coachee to actually bring their own awareness, their own self into the present moment. Because most of the time what we find is that people live in the past or live in the future. They worry about the past, things that they haven't achieved. They worry about the future, what they might have to achieve, might, to do, might have to do. And mindfulness is a wonderful tool to teach people to actually be right here, right now. Not only to be right here, right now, but actually to accept that you're right here, right now, warts and all. You might be performing well, you might be just neutral, it might be going not so well. That's the nature of life. So accepting of what is has the advantage that we actually don't then push harder than we need to, that we then don't constantly worry about what we're doing, because this kind of worrying and not being in the present moment actually triggers in our physiology what we call the stress response. And when we produce these stress chemicals, then actually they affect how our brain works. They actually affect the areas of our brain that we need for creativity, for decision making, for orientation, for empathy, to work with other human beings. So we want these areas to be as calm and as present as possible for good working relationships. It's a good question. Actually, all human beings are born with it. If you look at a child, they are very often very mindful. They get completely drawn into whatever they are doing. Their wooden stick can become an airplane or something else. They get absorbed by the moment. And that's why it's so difficult to teach them concepts of time and concepts of now you have to have your lunch because they are actually in the moment and they want to eat when they're hungry and when they're not playing. So actually the good news is all human beings at some point were mindful and partially due to the way our life has speeded up we have lost the ability to be mindful. So often we are in autopilot, yeah? we are more like human doings rather than human beings and Actually, we can, you know, return to that state of simply being in the moment. And of course, we have developed various programs. There is something that's called the eight-week mindfulness course. And there are also shorter, you know, one-to-one -one sessions that a coach could, uh, you know, actually teach the coachee certain mindfulness uh, attitudes and uh, skills. Uh, it will depend on the individual how much they want to learn it, how often they practice it. I mean, there is an old saying from, I think, from a Zen perspective that says, when you eat, just eat. When you walk, just walk. And that's mindfulness. Paying attention to one particular object of awareness rather than doing the multitasking. Because we know, actually, we can't multitask. We switch from one task to the other. So mindfulness is not that difficult to learn, but if you really want to have it as an automatic skill in your uh, programming, you know, in your computer hardware, <laughs> then actually practicing a little bit every day or ever so often will be helpful. There are some practices that we call, you know, mindfulness meditations, which are practices where we lie down or sit down and focus on an anchor of awareness, which might be, for example, the breath or sound or just looking at the 
picture without changing your view, just looking at it and seeing what you can absorb by not switching around. So that might be a mindfulness practice in the sense of meditative practice. And the other mindfulness practices are everyday mindfulness practices. So for example, drinking a cup of tea and really drinking it, feeling the cup, feeling the heat, feeling the taste of the tea, smelling it, mindful showering, rather than being under the shower and making a to-do list for the rest of the day, actually having the shower, feeling the water, smelling the soap, really being in the experience. Yeah. Uh, normally the practices are perhaps five to ten minutes or a bit longer, but we probably just do three minutes. So we, we will do a sitting meditation focusing on the breath. Yeah? So the instruction would be that, first of all, I encourage you to sit upright in a dignified posture, so we're not slumping, nor are we sitting rigid like a soldier, but, you know, dignified. And the word dignity gives us some kind of sense what we do. And we really feel our feet firmly on the ground, so we want to have a sense of connecting to the ground. Okay? And actually, all you need to do is just sit there and follow the instructions, and you might find it easier to do that by closing your eyes. And I will start the meditation with the Tibetan uh, tingsha, a little bell, and I finish the meditation with three rings of the bell. So in case you, uh, you know, get very relaxed or calm, that will call you back. So coming into this moment, when your life is actually happening. Feeling your feet firmly on the ground, feeling your sitting bones on the chair, and your hands resting gently in your lap. So the invitation now is to let go of any thought, and should thoughts come back, which they may do, Gently let them pass by as if there were clouds or leaves on the river. Your only anchor of awareness, of attention, is now your breath. So I'm inviting you to pay attention to how your body is actually doing this breathing. Your body has been doing it for many years and it knows exactly how to do it. So the invitation is to actually watch your body breathing itself. So you may notice on the in-breath that your chest expands and perhaps even your belly. And on the out-breath you may notice that the same areas deflate. So the invitation is not to extend or deepen your breathing in any way. That's not necessary. Simply breathe naturally and observe yourself breathing. Breathing each in-breath for its full duration and breathing each out-breath for its full duration. Duration. Noticing perhaps that there is a small pause after each in breath and after each out breath. And should your mind wander off, which minds often do, gently and without judgment, return to the awareness of breathing again and again, just that one thing, just the breath coming and going, riding the waves of your breathing.
and if your mind wanders off, gently escorting it back to the breath.